Hello and welcome to Is This Good? The show where we boldly, conclusively, and scientifically decide what things in this big wide world are good. I'm Matt Austin and with me as always is production powerhouse Jason Doyle. Hello. Hi JD, great to have you here. And today's guest is a touring stand-up from Atlanta. She was a semi-finalist on America's Got Talent, where she tangled with that dastardly Brit, Simon Cowell. <laughs> she hosts Cheaties, a podcast about infidelity, but in a funny way. And her album, White Trash Cinderella, is out now. And I dare you to find a comedy album with a louder audience on it. That crowd was hot. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Georgia Peach herself, Lace Larrabee. Lace, welcome oh, to Is thanks. This Good? Thank you so much for having me. You know what is good is that intro. Uh, oh, okay, that's... <laughs> one of the best. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, well, we're so glad you're here, but right off the top, I do have a, a bone to pick with you, Lace. So Let's do it. So we, we kind of vaguely uh, know each other through other people. We never really talked. We never really hung up. So through an intermediary... Uh, mm -hmm. One Nora Artinian. She asked if you'd be on this podcast. You said yes. yes. I was super excited. I said, "Oh, that's so great, Lace." She's a she's a professional comedian, and she said yes to do this podcast. <laughs> but then I found out something disturbing. Oh, no. I listened oh, no. to your podcast, Cheaties. <laughs> yes. And I found out that 2023 is your year of yes. So you basically had no <laughs> um, choice but to accept this invitation. Now it, it doesn't mean as much like oh, you know if shit. i if i was going out with someone and then they told me like oh you know what's funny when i first started dating you i was in my year of yes i'd be like oh i i, I would prefer f if you were in your year of no but you just couldn't resist me and that's why <laughs> you're dating me so lace i do appreciate you being here but i am also kind of hurt <laughs> well hopefully this will make you feel better um i the second our podcast is over, I don't remember a word of what I said. So the fact that we even said this was the year of yes, I don't even remember saying that. So <laughs> I, the, the next moment, I'm sure I closed the laptop and I was back to being my cynical, angry, uh, say no until you have to say yes of mode. So don't you worry. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good to hear. To. Yeah, it's I good to hear because to. I feel like on the podcast you were literally talking about being in LA and almost getting a tattoo on your wrist that said yes. yes. So I'm glad. I'm glad, I'm glad <laughs> that you didn't commit to that. Did not. Did not. Did not. Now, do I have uh, one that I just got in LA a few months before that is a pine cone bumblebee? Yes. Yes, I did. So I do do stupid things even in my year of no. So don't you worry. Don't you worry. Okay. And do pop over to YouTube to see that pine cone bumblebee. It's very <laughs> impressive. Um, as I mentioned off the top, you were on America's Got Talent. And mm -hmm. you are the second guest we've had on this show that's tangled with Simon Cowell. Oh, had, yeah. We had Jackie Tone, a comedian from L.A. on. She was on American Idol. She yes. also had some beef with Simon. But I have to say that what, what happened with you and Simon was way more insane <laughs> um, one of the best tangling. So if I'll just quickly set this up. So you're, okay. you're in the semifinals, meaning he liked you the first time he put you through, you're doing your act and he buzzes the red X during your act as you're basically about to get to your closer. Wow. Thereby killing all momentum. I don't know if you've heard, but timing is about, uh, rhythm and comedy. <laughs> uh, rhythm and timing is, is <laughs> yeah, what I meant comedy, to say. Yeah. Comedy is 100% based on the lead up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so how, how was that when that little prick hit that red button in the <laughs> middle of your act? So it's, so if you would have asked me between that date and then when I came back to the, fin for the finale, cause then they, let, let's say they, spoiler alert to anyone, they brought me back for the finale to have me roast Simon alongside mm -hmm. Jeff Ross, of course, mm -hmm. Roastmaster General himself. And, uh, that was exciting. They knew, they knew they fucked up when everything went down at the semifinals. So if you would have asked me before they had invited me back for the finale, I had a very different answer for you, uh, than now, because now it's hindsight. Now I know what all happened. So I'm going to spoil it. I found out at the finale from Simon Cowell himself that the producers had him buzz me. Wow. So See, now JD is the producer of this show. He's always trying to get me to say rude things to guests. And I say, <laughs> but unlike Simon Cowell, I have a mind of mine. I say, no, JD, these are our treasured guests. Okay. We yeah. cannot be mean to them, even if it's for content. 
Right. I think what was going on was, uh, the, so the, my first round. So in my initial audition, that's, which by the way, for anyone who understands how reality TV works, it's not, that was, they've seen me and talked to me. They had talked to me for like three years before I was on the show. So, you know, they bring you in for that audition and then Sophia Vergara interrupts me while I'm on stage. And it was very natural. It was like, it actually happened in conversation. She was just so like enthralled. She felt like she and I were talking to each other. And then she just was like, she asked me a question and then I, I immediately had a comeback and then I flowed right in, went right, right back into my set. People loved it. I got a standing ovation, blah, blah, blah. And I think that that's what they were trying to go for in the live oh, round. They, they thought you trying, would like stop your act to come at Simon to come at Simon and have something. And what they, what they didn't think through was the fact that that first time that was like a positive, fun, mm -hmm. silly <laughs> yeah. heckle. It's Sophia. She's got the accent and the hair and the tits and she's lovely. And she's like, you know, and it's fun to sit, just sit. And she was like, so engaged. Simon is terrifying. Number one, number two, the first thing I did was that was recorded. That was not happening live. Right. It happened live in the moment, but you know, they recorded it and made it look great with si that's live television. They put the fear of God in you while you're there for that. So whatever they had intended to happen there and they knew, and I was doing material I didn't want to do. And I fought with the producers for weeks, months actually about what I was going to do. And they kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And I was like, okay, if you think so, like I ended up getting like Stockholm syndrome. I was like, well, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe y'all are right. Maybe you'd know comedy more than me, you know, a 11 year professional, uh, in stand up comedy. <laughs> maybe you, you producers who've never written a joke in your lives, maybe, you know, more than I do. So I think I should listen. Mm -hmm. And I did that. And I, they did it all so that it would be topics that he wasn't into or whatever, so that he would buzz me. And it just, right. it, it, if it uh, didn't work out in anybody's favor except mine, because I got to come back for the finale. So yeah, it was that the buzzer's so fucking loud. We can say fuck on here, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That buzzer is the <laughs> loudest thing you've ever fucking heard. It was shocking to my core. Like I, wow. I think I pissed myself a little bit. It was <laughs> so loud. I did not see it coming. Like you said, I was building up to the end of that set. The set I didn't even want to do to begin with, and I'm trying my best to sell it, and. Yeah, that, that sucked, man. But I was able to, I, thankfully, I had something to come back with him at afterward. But to know now that it was all set up makes me almost angrier than it than I was the first. You know what I mean? The first yeah, time I was angry because yeah, I was brutal. mad at Simon. And now I'm, like, mad at the whole operation. I mean, I love AGT, and I'm thankful for them. And I still work the, maybe I shouldn't have said any of this, because I still host for them at the residency in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut, we'll cut all that out. Um, <laughs> all right. Welcome, Lace Larrabee. Um, no, just kidding. <laughs> I want to be like as Mark Marin is to um, to uh, Lauren Michael stories. I want to be as to Simon Cowell stories on uh -huh. this podcast. I just want to collect them, and then eventually uh, I want to meet him and and confront him in in public. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What, one more question I had for you before we get into the show is: You teach stand up comedy in Atlanta. That's I true, do. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now JD lives in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how would you suggest he go about generating material or figuring out, you know, what's funny about him uh, if he so, were your student? So you're trying to get me to do a free comedy class right now? Just a quick you're free, trying... um, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, gratis on the house. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't do jokes for free off stage, and I, and I don't teach oh, comedy for free well, outside this is of my for, class. Hold on. This might change your mind. This is for exposure. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because that really pays off. Let me tell you. How do I get signed up for this? I don't want to be a stand-up okay. comedian. <laughs> He's okay. like, why did you do this to me? <laughs> okay, well, if well, this goes well, J.D., if you impress Lace, maybe she'll give you, like, a scholarship or something <laughs> to attend the class. Yeah, we're, no scholarships for another white dude doing comedy. i tell you that. <laughs> oh, okay. I think I we're think all there's, set. There's we're plenty set? of us. <laughs> okay. Well, a quick bit of housekeeping. It's like, oh, fuck. Okay. Oh, no. fuck. Okay. We got to change. JD, we got to change everything. A uh, quick bit of housekeeping. If you have topics for a future show, email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Gmail Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at isthisgoodpod. Subscribe on YouTube. Review us on Apple Podcasts. I have to say some good reviews up there last week. But I'm sorry. We still need more. We have an wow. insatiable thirst for reviews <laughs> that will never be quenched. <laughs> and remember to please tell a friend or family member about the show. Why? Because by downloading this episode, 
you all joined my street team. So, Lace, the premise of the show is very simple. I'm going to give you a topic. You tell me if it's good. You ready to go? Uh, yeah. Is there, should I just say good or not? Or is there going to be, a, do I need an explanation with it? Because I'm ready to go for all of the above. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say definitely give us a, a like, explain okay. your work. Um, no, I'm just going to go yes or no. That's yes it. or no. Let's go. I got um, you. And I understand that's you punishing us for being men in comedy, but <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. I, I, I married a white male comedian. It's fine. Oh, okay. Uh, my condolences. So <laughs> Max B asks, uh, giving honest feedback when a friend or family member asks if you liked their cooking, is this good? So Max continues, he wrote in the email, when a friend or family member cooks something for me and asks how I like the food, what should I do if I have nothing positive to say? Is it better to lie? Should I let them know that I don't like what I don't like about the meal? My intention is always to be honest. So would sharing my experience help them improve the dish for the next time? Or should I keep letting them make the same culinary mistakes over and over? So what do you think, Lace? Is this good to tell someone that you don't like their cooking? If it's a close family member, if it's somebody you've eaten with a bunch, especially, let's do this, especially if it is your spouse or your partner, Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very important to tell them if you like the food or not. Yeah, you're going to hurt some feelings up top, but if you don't tell them and they that's their go-to meal and they love it and they don't see anything wrong with it, you're going to you're it's so stupid to put yourself through misery every single time they cook food. You know? My husband, he did that for a while when we first started dating. He was like he was just so thankful that someone was cooking for him that he was like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, it's great." And then it took him like months to tell me he hated uh green beans, like the not the the canned ones, but the, the fancy ones. And those sure, are my yeah. favorite. And the I was like, Colvert, as they say, yes, Colvert. Yes, yes. Those. And, uh, and so those are my favorite kind and he hates them. And I was like, Oh, well then why didn't you fucking tell, like you should have told me. And then I could have had two different types of vegetables for us, you know? So it just, it's, I don't mind. It is not going to, it's not going to break my heart, you know? Yeah. But I think like cooking is a way that in, especially in a relationship, like a lot of people show, um, show love through cooking and, sure. and show nurturing. So if sure. someone's telling you that like, oh, this dish is bad, it could sound like you are bad at loving me. You are bad at nurturing. Me. <laughs> well, but that's, I mean, a long-term relationship doesn't work without communication. That's like, what if, let's put it in the bedroom. If you don't like something weird they do when you're having sex, then you're, mm -hmm. and you just keep saying, you just keep going, yeah, no, that was great. I enjoyed it. You're not going to do that. You're going to eventually go, hey, that's weird. I don't like that. That's only for <laughs> you, bud. Like, especially if it has to do with food in the bedroom. Especially yeah. if it's green beans in the bedroom, which, green, of course, that's... It's very common. Very um, common. Very, very common, common kink. A lot of people don't know about that. <laughs> uh, JD, have you ever told Rachel that you don't like her cooking? Uh, oh, yeah. The, the hundreds of times, I've <laughs> Hundreds of times. I think maybe she shouldn't be allowed to cook, maybe? Is that... <laughs> or maybe well, you I should mean, be cooking the food now? I'm not saying that... Look, we've, been, we've been together for 20 years. I mean... Yeah. You know, there's most of the time, 90% of the time, uh, whatever she cooks is great. I love it. Um, but, uh, hey, if something, if she misses the mark, then I'm going to say something. <laughs> this is the hey, fucking Gordon Ramsay well, over that's here. That's exactly, I'm totally, I'm fucking, you've got to get back in there, donkey. No, I wouldn't say that. But, uh, <laughs> Turn around, smack her on the ass. Yeah. 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 We've got, a, we've got our, uh, we've got our re repartee, I guess. Um, but, yeah, no, of course I would be honest. Um, if I tell her that I love everything, then she she gets to a point where she doesn't believe me, right? Mm -hmm. She she'll be like, "Well, you're just saying that. You 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 say that about everything." I'm like, mm -hmm. "No, I, no, I don't." The the fucking chicken parmesan you made the other night was awful. Remember I told you that? <laughs> and then so it it actually elevates my actual com compliments if that makes sense. People get nervous when they're asked about a dish they don't like, and they end up complimenting the very thing that's wrong with it. So my one suggestion is uh. if the, I don't know, the steak is dry, mm -hmm. don't be like, oh, so good and so moist. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. people tend right. to like oversell right. yes. uh, the thing that's wrong with it. But to, you have to find, about, you have to find the right compliment. Like, like I said, that comes into saying, you got to just pick something up. So you're like, yes, how was the food? Oh, there was food. Edible. I, it it nutrients was, there, there was food. were in it. I put it in here, and I think it's going to come out there. Uh, uh -huh. Hopefully not back out here. And that's <laughs> that's what I really like about the food. So thank you so much. Yeah. And what right. What is the move, though? Do you choke it down, Matt? Or do yeah, you, you, got, you have to. You have I mean, to, frankly, yeah. it's like, why am I telling people that the food in their own home is bad when I'm not even telling a waiter that the food in a restaurant is bad? When they're like, did you like it? I'm like, loved it. 
You know, okay, I, see, I, mean, I think this is just a problem with you, Matt. Like, I don't, um, I, I don't do that's that. That's what this podcast is about, Lace. Like, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Clearly, you were giving compliments where compliments are not uh, fucking necessary. Well, we poll people before the start of the show on Twitter, and 54% of people said being honest when a friend or family member asks you if you like their cooking is, what do you think? They said good or bad. Good. Being honest? You're right. 54% yeah. said honesty is the best policy. Yes. So the majority, but not not a heavy majority. Mm -hmm. um, all right, next topic. Bryce C. and Louis K. ask, cruises, are they good? A little bit of a broad topic, but I guess my first question is, Lace, have you ever been on a cruise? Oh, yeah, several. Okay, why? Well, you know, I thought, that, yeah, I didn't ask <laughs> anyone, but I don't know. I said, there's something about Lace that tells me she's been on a cruise. <laughs> there's something about the fact that her album is named White Trash Cinderella that we thought... This is a bitch who likes a, this is a, a likes person a that may have, may have toured the, the, the yeah. may have toured the Gulf. May have toured the Gulf. <laughs> Not only that, our mutual friend Nora Artinian was with uh -huh. me on a cruise. Uh, she was on my bachelorette cruise. So you yeah. went. I didn't. Oh, you know what? I do remember that. I didn't mm -hmm. know. See, now Nora Artinian, if I had to guess, would strike me as someone that's never been on a cruise. Never, and don't think she cared for it. Yeah. Don't think she cares. So, okay, well, let's get into it. If I were to ask her, it. hey, is a cruise good? She would say, no. Okay, so let, no, let's get not. into it. Why do you like cruises? Here's why I specifically enjoyed a cruise for my bachelorette party. Well, we can go with that specific uh, topic is because I'd been on so many bachelorette parties in my time before I got married. And it was actually five years ago, like this past weekend. Uh, so all the memories just all came up in the little time hop thing. So I got to revisit that. But, uh... Uh, the reason I loved it is because you are trapping all of your friends with you um, mm -hmm. in a potentially perilous situation that they can't get away from. And I really like that. Um, they have all <laughs> demanded so much out of me over the years. And mm -hmm. I've, you know, gone to a lot of, a lot of bachelorette parties where a girl like disappears in the night, you know, you get a runner, you get somebody who just leaves. Yeah. At least she didn't disappear off the, off the back of the boat though well and that's the thing is you know if they disappeared they're dead so you don't really have to waste the rest of the night looking for them you know right, what i mean like if they're right. gone right right you can gone. rally yeah that's yeah you can rally that's the coast guard situation now now they're there bro. <laughs> it's not going to ruin the rest of my night <laughs> um no but i've had so many times where girls have legit disappeared off of out of a trip because they meet a dude at the bar or whatever and then you can't find mm -hmm. them and then you got to spend the next few days like looking for the girl and you're out of town there's just so many of the, maybe I just have a bunch of slutty friends. I don't know. But I, <laughs> I loved the idea of like, y'all are all trapped here. We're all together. We know where everybody is. Nobody's having to worry about how to get home safely. No one's like, okay, who's, are we buying an Uber? Who's in that Uber? Did she go home with that guy? You know, if you went to a strange guy's cabin, cool, we'll find you. All right. It's real easy to find everybody. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. see you on the Lido deck in the morning. This is a good fucking time. People watching. There's a lot of dudes in Hawaiian shirts. There were a lot of other bachelorette parties. So we were in like a uh -huh. battle of the bachelorette situation. And, and sorry, we... is this a thing? I didn't know. Like having your Clearly. bachelor party. Clearly. And bachelor parties too? Is that a thing? Uh, I didn't see any bachelor parties. A lot of bachelorette parties. I think we had at least four on ours, on our cruise oh that we God. were on. And wow. yeah. Did you fight them for supremacy? Oh, 100%. We, we killed a couple of the tribes. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know yeah. I know some of your friends. You, I would be frightened. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, we won, though. There was a dance off one day on the. And see, where does this happen? This doesn't happen anywhere else. Like, if there's a bachelor party, there's. <laughs> so a, there's I've never a... seen anyone dancing anywhere yeah, except for a cruise. Exactly. <laughs> there's a DJ on the deck. Everybody's drunk as shit on pina coladas by like 2 p.m. And they're like, all right, we got bachelor parties. Get up here. Okay. You bet. Where are you from? All right. Who's your leader? All right. You find out who the leaders are and who the, who the bride is. And then you're like, all right, you're going to learn a dance routine and you're going to have a dance off. And we're like, fuck yeah. We crushed the other. One. I mean, it was great. It was great. It was a lot but it's, of fun. it's interesting to me that the thing you like about a cruise is the, the thing that most people don't like about a cruise, like being trapped, being trapped. on there, um, having to, you know, get on and off the boat for short periods of time where it's like enough time to be inconvenienced, but not enough time to actually see anything yeah okay so jd have you been on a cruise have you ever seen those um those carnival cruise commercials where there's like <laughs> 30 pools and a water slide and a climbing wall and gone maybe that's fun i i have 
Um, I, I sorry, I've seen the commercials. I've never oh, okay. been on a cruise. I've <laughs> okay. never been. On you got to do it. You're missing out. It's a whole other. Yeah, part of yeah. The, well, here's the sounds society. like sounds like someone doesn't trust their sea legs. It, well, I, it's not me. It's my wife, Re- Rachel. Ironically, sea leg is her last name, but she cannot go on a boat. <laughs> That's true. Her last name is <laughs> Sea Leg. But I never thought That's about amazing. it. That's <laughs> amazing. She uh, <laughs> she cannot handle the water. Um, and you know, like we've had lots of people come to us and say oh you don't feel it it's the boat so big and blah no blah, no blah. you feel it that's bullshit yeah you absolutely feel it i, I can't take the risk i can't go like a seven day like imagine seven days on a cruise ship and within literally a half hour she would start puking her guts out like mm-hmm. there's still seven more days of that i mm-hmm. i can't i can't risk it for the for the money and also Everything you just described, Lace, you're describing hell to me. Like, <laughs> liter- literal hell. Well, 69%. Nice. nice. Hey! Uh, uh, of people say cruises are not good. So, Lace, you're in the minority in this wow. one. But I, I do appreciate it. You've been on six. It sounds like you're going to go on at least six more. I don't um, think it's been six, but I've been on several. I've been on several. Okay. Oh, yeah. several. I do okay. love a cruise, though. Fuck it. It's do, a good she time. She loves a cruise. She loves yeah. a cruise. Yeah. We called it my trash Lorette party. So we knew what oh, we were doing. We knew it was oh, trashy. Cool. We knew what we were getting into, and that's what it is. You can't think that it's anything more than that. Now, post-COVID, do I think a little, do I think twice now about a cruise? Yes. Because being trapped in a pandemic sounds like a, that mm. is a true nightmare. Right? Yeah. But, Yeah. For sure, I love that you that you love the trashiest version of the cruise as well. Yeah, like that's you love it, and that's I do. that's awesome. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I want to go on a carnival. Yeah, I think you've convinced me because I think you should. I like messiness. I like yeah. chaos and messiness. Yeah. Oh, the, the best videos are the best. I mean, they're they're kind of horrific, but cruise brawls. Have you ever seen these? Yeah. <laughs> because like people are on the boat. If if there's like. If people get on each other's nerves on day one, by day six, they are literally like fighting and they're recruiting. It's like, yeah, there's rivals. Like they're recruiting rival gangs. Yeah, you're like, I fucking hate those people. You don't even know why you fucking hate those people. But then you also, it's, uh, they took my place at that shuffleboard. I was trying to play shuffleboard. I reserved a game and they came on. Yeah. I couldn't get into the hot tub. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the best is when you start, you create child enemies and you're like, all right, fuck that seven year old. (laughs) Yeah. Like I've watched him several times get in and out of the hot tub, like over and over and over, like, or or doing whatever. Like, you know, I love it. I fucking, I love having a tiny enemy. Yeah. They should have, uh, they should have security come in and uh, break up the fights and say, hey, hey, hey. You're on a cruise. We're going to solve this on the dance floor. And everybody has to go on and then the they dance gotta, floor. Yes, yes. All right. Well, Lace, it's time for an Is This Good segment where it's not even a question if things are good. Everything is bad. It's time to play Pick Your Poison. All right. Here's how it works. I'm going to give you four related options that are all bad. And you have to pick your poison. So whichever you consider to be the least worst option. But I'm warning you now, there is a right answer. Mm. So February 14th is Valentine's Day, of course, coming up. Uh, It's everyone's favorite holiday where we say it with me. Look back to the third century to solemnly and respectfully (laughs) honor the Christian martyr, St. Valentine. (laughs) Yes. Yes, that's how I celebrate. Yeah, That's how you celebrate. Okay, so today's category is Valentine's Day presents. Remember, you do have to get one of these presents. Mm -hmm. There is a right answer. They're all bad. I'm going to read them to you. All right, option number one. Cute! He's secretly been taking guitar lessons so he can write you a song. But the guitar sounds weird, and he gets really flustered trying to tune it, so he throws it down in disgust and sings Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen a cappella. And it's not, like, bad, but when he gets to the line... You ain't a beauty, but hey, you're all right. <laughs> he looks directly at you in a way that is frankly upsetting. Okay, yeah. so that's gift number one. Okay. Gift number two. Aw, it's an impeccably arranged bouquet of flowers. Hydrangeas, lilacs, gardenias, all your favorites. You look closer and see a card. Dear Nana Byshevsky, forever in our hearts. <laughs> yup, <Yep, laughs> he stole them from a cemetery. You now have a Polish cursed <laughs> cast upon you. Nice. Okay, that's gift okay. number two. Gift number three. Hilarious! It's a gag gift. 
You excitedly tear open the wrapping paper, only to find an eight-pack of adult diapers. Because we're going to grow old together, you ask, hopefully? No, he says. It's because that time we went to the state fair and you ate an entire funnel cake, even though you said you were full, and then you sharded on the pirate ship, which I then started calling the pile of shit. And to make matters worse, they're not even name brand depends. They're Kirkland, and you pay for the Costco membership. That's, that's insult to injury. Or do you want gift number four? Luxurious. He bought you perfume. Your favorite one that you just ran out of? No, something different. You take a whiff. <laughs> Smells familiar. Oh, great. It's the perfume his mother wears. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now that's the scent of a woman, he says in his bad Al Pacino <laughs> voice that you hate. hoo it's, it's embarrassing for everyone. <laughs> so there are your four gift options. Um, you know, you have the uh, acapella Bruce Springsteen. That's kind of insulting. Mm -hmm. You have the flowers that he stole from a cemetery mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that come with a Polish curse. Mm -hmm. uh, you get the diapers, just a hilarious gag gift. And then you got the perfume that smells like his mom. So, um, Lace, unfortunately, it's time to pick your poison. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with number five, being uh, single after that. You're going <laughs> to okay. ditch this fucker, uh, first of all. No, I think uh, my favorite uh, the, and the most intriguing is going to be the uh, flowers from a funeral. Because okay. I, you know, I, I like a little variety in life and I would uh, enjoy seeing what a Polish curse has in store for me. So. It's not good. I'm, I'm warning you. It's not good. Who knows? You know, I, it's, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Let's bring a, 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 a witch's curse upon you. You're going to be drowning in kielbasa. I, that's fine. Hey, <laughs> and that we could call that a gag gift. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I do know. I, I do know what you're right. saying. Okay. You bring okay. that. You bring that into okay. the bedroom. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, JD, what, what, what about you? What, what struck you here as the best of the worst gifts? I mean, without any of the explanations, the worst is the sing you, sings you a song. But I actually think uh -huh. I could handle the Bruce Springsteen because um, then it's over. You you grin and bear it, and then it's over. There's no curse. Uh, I don't have to feel bad about sharding that one time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not right. It happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that pirate ship is... Well, I don't know. Lace, Lace loves cruises, so maybe she loves a. I love a, a cruise and a ship. curse. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with song this time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. The song is in and out, but you know what? The the receiver of the song is never going to forget how yeah. awful that was, and you'll not be able to look at that person the same way. Again. You're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you like Bruce Springsteen, that might ruin him. That might ruin him for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the correct answer is number one. It is it is the song because mm, it's okay. that's the most effort he put in a lot of effort. No. To go behind your back. Yeah. <laughs> you exactly. thought he was cheating on you. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, he was just taking guitar <laughs> lessons, forgot to learn how to tune it. That's why I would say just get just get a tuner. There's no yeah. shame. See, but then and all the lead the, up, the lead up of going behind the back. And now you've already got a lawyer on retainer. Uh, you're about mm. to, you know, you're going to give him the, the papers. And then you're like, oh, it was a song. And then you go, oh, it was that song. Oh, this is terrible. And then it, you're like, well, I guess I'm just going to follow through with this divorce. Do you celebrate Valentine's Day? We don't really. And as comics, like I, I always do shows on Valentine's Day. So mm -hmm. no shows I, where I, you, where you make fun of single people, or or, no, or you you make fun no. of Valentine's Day and yeah. how annoying coupled people are. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's hey, a great when is service. This, that you when do. is this episode going to come out? Do you know? This is coming out Monday. Oh, so right the, before Valentine's Day. Yes. Oh, so let me do a quick little shout out where we're talking okay, about Valentine's great. Day. Two things are happening that day. Not only am I doing a live show that night, I mean, I, I, you'll probably give me a chance to plug some stuff after, but on the 13th. Uh, actually, no. So it's no? good that you squeeze Fantastic. this in because we do not let our guests. This is my, so, and actually, JD, um, you'll cut this all out after. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's so, great. But, but, but yeah. do it. Timestamp it. it. No, uh, Monday, February 13th, I'm going to be performing at the Starling, which is formerly the W Hotel in Midtown. Um, so we're doing a Valentine's Day show there, but everybody can go. It's not just for gals. It's a great lineup. But then on Valentine's Day, I'm very excited about this. I've already pre-recorded all of it, but I am uh, the host for 24 hours on one of the Sirius XM comedy channels uh, called She's So Funny. And so they have me doing that and they're going to play my entire album um, oh. three different times that day. And I'm oh, nice. the host in between all of the jokes and all the comics all day long. So yeah, Valentine's Day. It's, yeah, great for great for comedy. Have you been working on some Valentine's Day material? 
I mean, I'll probably say some stuff about Valentine. I mean, but I've got a lot of material about relationships in general, so. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm asking. I guess, like, yeah. you're not using it here, so. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. You don't want to workshop not, no, it. I've told you, that's... I don't work for free. Okay, that's, that's fair. All right, we've got some more topics to get to. We'll explore them now in our gently paced speed round we call The Chaotic Good. All right, Lace, The Chaotic Good. Did you happen to see an article in New York Magazine called The New Rules came out last week? And it's no is a perfectly fine answer. I don't think so, so no. Okay. Um, so the premise of this article was like the pandemic broke our brains mm -hmm. and we all forgot how to act. Mm -hmm. um, so New York Magazine dropped 140 new rules um, about etiquette for our modern society. So all these rules are basically all like, is this good questions? Like this is, there couldn't have anything been anything more right down our alley. So I pulled five of these new rules from the article and I just want you to give me your gut reaction, whether you agree with their advice or not. Okay. All right. So here we go. First one. New York Magazine says, if your friend is dating someone you seriously object to, you have one shot to sit your pal down and say so. And they continue on. They write, the conventional wisdom has been that unless your friend is being hurt, keep your opinion to yourself because it will damage your relationship. Our feeling is that you can share your reservations, but you only have one shot. Do you agree with this advice, Lace? Yes. Okay, so even if the person is, like, not being, God forbid, abused, but cheated on or just being lied to, like, if they're not being hurt, if you just don't like the person, you can sit that person down and say, get out, or we hate him, or what? Yeah, I think it's important because, uh, first of all, like post-pandemic, we've all learned life is too short. Uh, it's too short to be miserable, and so many friends have said after a relationship ends, I wish y'all would have told me to their friends. Like, I w really? why didn't you say something? Hmm. If you would have and, said but something. But would that have changed anything? It might have planted a seed. And then they would have started noticing that thing. Now, I don't think that sitting somebody down and going, hey, listen, uh, your buddy, you know, whatever. Like, like this is going to be an issue for y'all. I love it when people say stuff like that. I mean, I think it's great because they're being honest. They're saying, hey. You do what you want with this information, but I noticed this thing. And then it might like shake you up a little bit and go, oh shit. Okay. You're right. I was a little blinded. I didn't think about that thing. And now you're going to think about it. And it's not going to ruin the relationship with your friend. If it does ruin the relationship with your friend, that's not a very good relationship with your friend to begin with. See, one problem I have with this advice is it says you have one shot to sit your pal down and say so, but it doesn't mm -hmm. give you a time limit. Like, sure. yeah. oh, I have one shot, in, so they've two, been together yeah. for like a year and a half, and now I'm like, I haven't used my one shot, so yeah. let's, let's get to it now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think you have zero shots, if I'm, if I'm being honest, because, I, and again, unless they're being hurt, who's to say I'm right? Like... If no, I I, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but then... it's not going to be right, but it is, it is good to have some perspective because I think when things happen in a vacuum, um, mistakes can be more, mis you know, more mistakes can be made at that point. But if you expand it and you find out like, what does the community think about, what does the village think about this relationship that I'm uh, getting into? And it does take one. It does take it one. It takes a village. But I also think the one shot thing is good to happen early. And then if too much time has now gone by, now it is too late for that. You don't want to save it for the wedding at the speak now or forever hold your peace situation. That's uh -huh. fucked up. At that point, you've already been on their bachelorette cruise. You've already done everything. <laughs> like, why say something now? Right now you're just a bitch. So at the beginning, though, of the relationship, I think it's important to be like, hey, listen, um, you don't like anime. Okay. And this dude's <laughs> entire personality is wrapped up in anime. You are not going to enjoy this long term. I'm just going ahead and saying that right now. Just put it out there. <laughs> do what She's you like, want. She's like, he doesn't like anime that much. You're like, he has a Dragon Ball Z haircut. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He's not here today because he is at a fucking Dragon Con. Like, listen. He's dressed as Pikachu. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You had to ask uh, who Princess Leia was, so this is not a good a good combination. Uh, JD, would you would you ever tell someone that you didn't like their partner? Um, I don't think no, I wouldn't. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, because guys but don't. It, Men do yeah. not communicate the way that women communicate. It's, oh, we communicate. We're sensitive men. We're sensitive men we on this podcast. Sensitive. I can tell how quickly you defended yourself. Wow. All right, but y'all don't talk amongst <laughs> yourselves. No, we like do. about we shit do. like that. But shit. if I if I love almond joy. And you hate coconuts, it would be weird for you to try to convince me that I didn't like almond joy. 
Like, just because you don't like Almond Joy doesn't mean I don't. And, and now, I don't like Almond Joy. It, it's repulsive, and I wish you'd said something, but I'm sorry. Those are the rules. You ha- I, I will eat Almond Joy forever. I, I, I think it's important to know because if then here's what's worse is the friendship fizzles the relation the romantic relationship continues and then the friendship fizzles because of some deep seated like I can't stand this thing about that person and then instead of ever addressing it you just disappear slowly as a friend and now you've ghosted your friend now your friend is like why does so and so not talk anymore why won't she go on couples dates with us this is ridiculous and then they don't know mm. I think it's important for the friendship yeah. But okay. don't you think you okay. could sabotage your relationship with the person if you? It's if not you a point good. It's not a good the... friendship if it if it is. Yeah, I guess if it's a sabotage, you should be close enough to a person. But I guess it's also the time of my life that I'm in. I mean, uh, I mean, you life. should be close enough to a person not to be bothered when they yeah. tell you they hate they hate the person that's most important to you. Exactly. That's fine. Yeah, it's, no, it's, but it's, you it's, should it's you should be able to listen to, if you're that good of friends. Now, if if it's someone who's an acquaintance, I'm not going to fucking sit them down and go, oh my god, I can't stand your partner you know, they suck for whatever reason. Like, I'm not going to do that. But if it's a close friend, I think it's important because you're going to be hanging out with those people a lot. They need to know. Um, Okay. You make some very good points. I know. I make a lot of We're not going to agree. We're not going to agree on this one. All right. But let's see if we agree on this next one. Okay. Don't tell people they look like other people. (laughs) So then they continue on. The target of your observation has to figure out if it was a compliment or an insult. And because beauty is subjective, there's no way for them to know what you meant and no way for you to know how they received it. You simply cannot guess how the other first person feels about being called, quote, a young Barbara Streisand. Like, (laughs) it's very true. Like, to me, that would be a very big compliment. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess not if someone told me I look like a young person. I was going to say, Matt, how many pe- people have told you? Uh, that is what I was going to say when this podcast started. I was like, I don't know if anyone's ever told you this. <laughs> no, no. But, a, a, young, uh, young... a young James Brolin, perhaps, but not, not <laughs> a young Barbara Streisand. I was going Streisand, but all right. Uh, so, Lace, this says, don't tell people they look like other people, but I'm going to uh, disregard this advice right away and just ask, do people tell you you look like anyone in particular? All okay, the time. Okay, who do you get? Um, and do you like it? I, so it's it's a it's a mixed bag of how I feel about doing it. I do it to other people only when I feel like the person is attractive. If I look at someone and I'm like, oh, they look like Steve Buscemi, I'm not gonna fucking tell them. Yeah, that but they people look, think Steve Buscemi's. Have you seen Young Steve? I Buscemi? have. I know. There's a whole thing. I get it. 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 Now, is he an incredible <laughs> actor? Is that sexy? Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Attractive? Yeah. Like physically? No, I don't. But that's also all in the eye of the beholder. But if it's someone who is uh, like objectively hot, and someone tells you you look like them, that's cool. I think that's okay to do. But if they're a questionable person or someone who doesn't have a, the the easy way to do it is to go, hey, who do people tell you you look like? Mm. You do it that way, and then you don't have to answer that question. And then you can go, you know, I can't spot it, but it's somebody. And if they don't say Steve Buscemi, then you go, yeah, it's just someone. I don't know. It's an actor, but it's somebody. you got a famous face, and then you leave it there, and you never say it if they don't say it. But if they bring it up, you can say it. So the one I get a lot, which I'm totally fine with, um, is a young Gina Davis. That's what I get. I get Gina Davis a lot. Oh, okay. And I think it's, okay. i got a big square face, and I'm fine with that. I, <laughs> she's got a square face. i got a square face. I'll take it. She's very pretty. Love Gina Davis. Love, Love her, Gina right? Davis. It's long, every. Long Kiss Goodnight is one of the most underrated action movies of all time. Every she's iteration. Chopping, she's just chopping that... Carrot, and then just shoom, throws the knife. Yeah, she's incredible. Yeah. And every, I mean, Thelma and Louise, fucking, uh, one of my favorites is A League of Their Own, Beetlejuice, sure, like all these. Sure. And then modern day, she's much older and still absolutely stunning. I will take, I will take that in a heartbeat. The good one I get is Michael C. Hall from uh, Six Feet Under and, and Dexter. Oh. oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. But there's one I get, there's one I get way more often than that. And I hate it. I get it all the time. And I'm always wondering, like, how can I tell if, if people are being honest with me when they mm-hmm. say this? Is it just because I have, like, you know, kind of reddish hair and I'm short that they're comparing me to this person? But something happened to me last week where it has... Oh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> it has been confirmed. So I, I had to take my car in to the suburbs to, to get it repaired. And I'm just wandering around the suburbs waiting, and I see a Target in the distance. So I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm going to go kill some time in the Target. And I'm standing in the clothing section, and I hear this guy talking... And I look up, like, kind of through the rack. I can see him. And he's, there's no one next to him. He's not talking to anyone. I'm like, oh, he, he must be on a phone. But I look in his ear, no, no Bluetooth. And I realize that he has some kind of tick where he's just, narr- like, anything he sees, he's just narrating. So mm-hmm. he's literally standing there going, oh, green shirt, green shirt. I don't like this shirt. Oh, 
It's t- f- seventeen ninety nine. That's too expensive. What about these pants? Do I need pants? I'm not really sure. Mm-hmm. I'll put mm-hmm. the pants back. Uh oh, I didn't fold this correctly. So he's just stream of con. Like he cannot. So I already love this. You guy, tell me. I I, I I want to spend an entire day with this dude. I want to hear him narrate his entire day. I hope he has a podcast. All right, go ahead. <laughs> he is he is my friend. Uh, <laughs> but he is you. <laughs> he is my he is me. You tell me at which point in the conversation you think he notices me. Okay, okay. so he's like. <laughs> Uh, he goes, <laughs> okay, no, he's like, I don't need pants. I don't know what size am I, 32? Am I 34? I'm not really sure. I should ask my mother. Oh, I'm going to text my mother right now. That guy looks like Seth Green. <laughs> uh, I'm hungry. I think there was a Starbucks at the front of this store. Maybe I should get a muffin. I was like... <laughs> That's the most honest feedback I'm ever going to get. I love that. That was great. That's great. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm um, Seth Green. Oh, I met Seth Green, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the night that I was on that we filmed for the finale for America's Got Talent for the roast, he. So that was actually Jeff Ross's birthday, and uh, Seth is very good friends with Jeff Ross. And so they all came to the comedy store afterward. Anyway, I got to say hey and meet him and shake his hand and all that. And here's the thing. He's more attractive in person than you think he is. Hmm. So whatever you think, he he usually is just, he's playing unlikable characters. And that's probably Uh why that people are like, uh, Seth Green, but he's not unattractive. So Hmm. if that helps any. But do you, do you see a resemblance? You're the only person I know that's ever met both of us. (laughs) I do. I don't think it's a bad thing. What? I know. I'm sorry. See, but see, and then, then how does it feel? Did you want to be? Uh, did you want to? Did you want to know that, or um, what were you hoping? No, I think I think, no, I think New York Magazine is correct. Don't do it. <laughs> JD, do you agree? Do you uh, ever 100%, tell percent? I agree. Okay. Okay. I mean, I for me, it's never good. Never ever has it been good, <laughs> except when I was maybe in grade nine and somebody said I looked like John Taylor from Duran Duran, and that was one person. Other than that, it's been Skippy from Family Ties and Duck Dynasty since I moved here. That, that's it. Like, that's all I get. <laughs> oh, so they can't even name a guy from – they're no, just they're like, just hey, Duck, Duck Dynasty, Dynasty guy. <laughs> just, no, they just call me Duck Dynasty. You get, like, son, Sons of Anarchy guy, like generic mm-hmm. Sons of Anarchy yeah, guy. I would prefer that, to be honest, but no, just Duck Dynasty guys. <laughs> okay. Don't do it. We'll do one more here. Um, the New York Magazine says, if someone starts telling you a story you've heard before – you have two seconds to tell them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they continue, interject with, oh my gosh, that was hilarious, or truly horrific, or unbelievable, you've told me. But if you don't say it within the allotted time, you just have to listen to them tell the story again. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a larger group, you just have to listen, period. So Lace, mm-hmm. what do you think? Um, do you agree with that two-second rule? Yeah. Now, if you're in a group, though, you can't stop. You, you have to just let it happen, because it's not for mm-hmm. you, whether you've heard it or not. That, that, that comes mm-hmm. to, like... Okay, let's that, take the group out of it. Yeah, so there's no, yeah, if it's just the two of you, you go, yeah, you've told me this before. Yeah, immediately. <sighs> even if they don't say, even if they don't ask first, have I hey, told st- you? Have I told yeah. you this before? You see, so they just go into the story and then you're just like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> all right, you already told me this. <laughs> if you know for a fact that it is a long story, you say right. early. Oh, oh, okay, okay. You've told me this before because you do not you've told me this gonna before. sit there and say. Now I have a couple friends who are like that who are habitual. Like they tell the same uh-huh. kind of story over and over and over, and okay, I have no okay. qualms with being. We're not like, going to name names here. We're yeah, no, I, I have no qualms with going. Yeah, yeah. Is that where such and such? Yeah, I think you've told me that. And they go, oh, okay. And then they can move on to whatever reason they were telling me that to begin with to get to another. It's like I've got that detail. We're good. We're all right, set. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, my problem with this two second rule is that's not enough time to figure yeah. out if you. Yeah, two seconds story. is too exactly. quick. Like that's that's yeah. too quick. But I do think once you realize, like in the story, to absolutely go ahead and nip it in the bud and say something right then. Yeah. Yeah. Like like if JD, if I know JD's story about uh, puking uh, like on the teppanyaki grill at a Benihana. Hmm. Oh, but that he, old chestnut. <laughs> but he starts telling me a story like. Did I ever tell you about that that trip I took to San Francisco? And I'm like, no. He's like, so so we get there. We go see the maitre d'. And, uh, sorry, we go ask the the concierge where to eat. And it turns out it's like a holiday there. So there's not much open except for a Benihana. And now I'm like, oh, my God. He he backdoored me into the Benihana story by telling me it was a story about his crazy trip to San Francisco. Now we're like 10 seconds in. And I, I can't stop that train once it's left the station. 
No, I disagree. You stop them as soon as you, you know. stop them. Okay. You stop them. This has definitely happened to me. Is where I've said you've told me this, and they're and then they just continue to tell the story anyways. You know what I mean? Like right, right. They're like, I'll do it better. I'll do it better this yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, and then you I've actually away. added some new some new <laughs> some new story points to it uh, yeah. that I'm workshopping. So. Mm-hmm. Well, and then yeah, you, guess- at that point, you go, hey, uh, just real quick, um, I also hated that fucking steak you cooked earlier. It was really dry. <laughs> and you look like Seth Green. And then you walk over and you jump off the side of the ship. At the end of the right. day, you still jump off the ship. Yeah, in that situation. <laughs> But the sometimes... end of every segment on the show is <laughs> yeah. one of us is dying. You walk the fucking plank. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one thing uh, left to do today, and that is play Subjective Trivia. <laughs> So lay subjective trivia, just like regular trivia, except only I know the answer. I have the answer here written on this card, so you know I'm not cheating. Now, before we get into it, you host the Cheaties podcast mm-hmm. with Catherine Blanford. Mm-hmm. So I would say you're an expert on cheating. Would you agree sure. with that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. An unlicensed okay. expert on unlicensed expert. <laughs> infidelity. Yes. Okay. So today's question is, uh, which fictional animated character not anime, don't worry, don't worry, Lace. Which fictional <laughs> animated character... Close this fucking laptop and jump off the ship. That's what I was about to do. <laughs> uh, which, which spirited away character... No. Uh, which fictional animated character is most likely to cheat on their partner? So, JD, if you could, please put up the, uh, the options here. So, starting from left to right, we've got Prince Adam. So, he used to be the beast of Beauty and the Beast, but um, Sweet Belle broke the curse with a kiss... Um, now he's just a regular dude for which he's very thankful, but would he cheat on her? Mm. Jasmine, would she cheat on Aladdin? Different socioeconomic backgrounds. Maybe he's embarrassing her at formal palace dinners. He doesn't know uh, what the salad fork is. Would she cheat on him? Mm -hmm. Tramp from Lady and the Tramp. Would he ever cheat on Lady? I mean, his name is Tramp. Tramp, it's in the name. And (laughs) he's probably tired of sharing his pasta. So would that lead him to stepping out on Lady. And then finally, Wilma Flintstone, would she cheat on Fred? Fred is annoying. I think <laughs> we all know that. He's always broing down with Barney at the Water Buffalo Club or whatever that is. Mm-hmm. He always has dumb schemes. And who's bailing him out of those dumb schemes? Wilma. Mm-hmm. And that's while she's, she's taking care of, of Pebbles and Dino. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. tired. Yeah. She's sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know what I'm talking about, Lace? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, again, the subjective trivia, there is an answer that only I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what do you think, Lace? And let's see, do our answers match? Who is more likely to cheat on their partner? Is Prince Adam uh, likely to cheat on Belle? Jasmine on Aladdin? Tramp on Lady? Or Wilma Flintstone on Fred Flintstone? Um, So, well, if we're going to break it down... uh, uh, Please do. Beast over here, he, um, he cannot because he lives in fear of being cursed again. So mm. he is not going to fuck around at this point. He finally just got back his dude body. And as much as he would like to go and uh, check out some other princesses, he knows uh, what happens when he fucks up. Okay. Jasmine, she's got a dude with uh, a, a genie. She's mm-hmm. not going anywhere, right? She could be yeah, like, I right. need Aladdin's dick to be bigger. And genie's like, as you wish. <laughs> she right? can't make wishes from the genie. The genie she, serves she, Aladdin. You don't know. All right. Uh, okay. uh, she okay. might be rubbing a little bit more than Aladdin. You know, she could be oh. rubbing that lamp <laughs> and getting what she wants out of the situation. I think the obvious answer is Tramp, but I don't know. Tramp, he has learned his ways. He's been out there. He has uh, he has uh, boned uh, all, all the bitches. <laughs> He's uh-huh. met them all, and he finally found the classy one that uh, that he wanted from the beginning. And he fell in love, and she got him off the streets, and she's giving him a new life. And now he's living in air conditioning. Um, and he gets a, a pillow at night and I think he's happy. He's got himself hot lady and, and that's, that's what he deserves. Okay. So he's had his time in the sun. He's sown all his seeds. Wilma Flintstone, not only will she cheat, but she absolutely should <laughs> be fucking cheating. She is dealing with so much shit. Uh, not only is she keeping the house tidy all the time and those floors are dirt. Okay. You oh, literally cannot yeah. ever properly clean a house that is dirt. So she's working on that, and she's working on that bod all the time. 
you know how much she work it is she to great. keep her in that fucking shape all the time? She has almost no waist, incredible little hips, great shape, hair always quaffed, perfect jewelry. She's also probably making mm. that jewelry because you know Fred's not buying that for her. She's sitting there chiseling down fucking rocks, gluing them together, dealing with a goddamn dinosaur as a dog. <laughs> she is so bit. She needs some strange. She needs it. She deserves it. She deserves to get uh, thrown on top of a, a pile of uh, animal skins. And um, really be taken care of <laughs> by by a strong a strong cave cave dude. Mm. And and what and that outfit is not far from lingerie that she's wearing. And not she only has that one outfit. Yeah, she's just got so, the one outfit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah so she's who, who is JD? Can you name me another Flintstone character that maybe she could? Well, I don't think she should sleep with Barney. That's I think her and Betty. Going. Barney tells Fred everything. Oh, because Barney sucks too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. Just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the boss, uh, uh, Mr. Slate, and then there was uh, the little green guy. Um, what was <laughs> the his name? space alien? The space guy, yeah. yeah Marvin yeah. the Martian. Marvin? It's not Marvin. It's, is it Marvin? No, that's a uh, that's Tunes. Warner. That's Brothers. Looney Tunes. Yeah. The Lo- Looney Tunes. Yeah. Who, what the I know who you're talking about. Name? Yeah, little green guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Maybe yeah, I don't this know. isn't the Joe Rogan podcast. We don't okay. look things up during it. <laughs> I don't know about the the issue. Like I don't know about the universe and if these would collide or not. But you know what? Maybe her and George Jetson. I like. Ooh. I think that's. Oh, nice. I like it. It's a nice little he crossover. Goes, He's way he in the future. The She's future. way in the past. Yeah, he goes back to the future. He falls in love. I think that would be a good. Yeah, I think him, uh, George, and George's wife Jane Jetson. I think that uh, they would be a good throuple. I'm going Beast Guy. What's his name? Prince Adam. Prince Adam, yeah. He's been cooped up that whole time, you know, and then he, you know, Belle's great. Don't get me wrong. So Belle's great. great. She loves books. But he's, yeah. deep down, he's a beast. He's all, mm-hmm. he was a, mm-hmm. he was a cad beforehand, yeah. and he'll just go mm-hmm. back to his ways. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I feel bad for Belle. Well, JD, you got the right answer. Yeah. The answer is Prince Adam. I disagree. Lace, I, th- I think you had a great answer, but hear, he- hear me out on Prince Adam. He's insecure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, he spent all those years living under the curse where people were too afraid to visit the castle. He was alone. He felt judged. He felt hideous, unacceptable to the world. So he gets to feeling, huh, Belle had a whole life before me. Maybe mm-hmm. I need to get my numbers up, you know? <laughs> Even things up. Maybe there's some inequality in this relationship. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe uh, I'll see what's out there now that I'm not completely hideous to look at and I have this castle. Plus, Belle has always got her head in a book. She's always <laughs> reading, you know. Mm-hmm. She ever wants to do stuff together. So I think uh, Prince Adam, Prince Adam, I'm not saying it's good. I think he should be spending the rest of his days on his knees thanking Belle for breaking the curse. But I, I think agree. He's, he's, I think he's stepping up. Do you know that Belle actually, you know, in that song where she's saying hello to everyone in the village? Like hello? the bonjour, yes. bonjour. Mm-hmm. Bonjour. Bonjour. bonjour, bonjour. Everyone she says hi to, she slept with. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Well, I you did know. not know. There that. goes the baker with his bread, like always. <laughs> yeah, we know what she meant by that. She meant his baguette. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He left me tired and sore last night. <laughs> yeah, he's insecure. He's all that. I think he would want to, but I think he spent a- enough time um, being cursed, and he had time before he was a beast. He had that time to sow his seeds, mm-hmm. and now he's like, you know what? I'm not doing that. My only friends were fucking candlesticks before. He's like, no, nah, I can't. I'm not going back to that life. Well, again. that's a great point. That's a great point. Now that ev- like everything is a real human again, like now that Mrs. Potts is a woman. Yeah. Everyone watch out. Watch out for Prince Adam because sure. I, I don't trust him quite. I'm saying I'm saying this is an obvious. He's the obvious answer. Him and Tramp are the obvious answers. And I think the most unlikely, more realistic answer is going to be Wilma. But yeah. who don't listen to me. I'm just the unlicensed expert on. Cheating. Speaking of cheating, Lace, this is the point where you can officially say, tell people where to find you <laughs> and, and promote Cheaties, uh, your excellent podcast. Sure. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Cheaties podcast available everywhere you get your podcasts. Uh, Apple, obviously we also love the reviews and all that jazz. So, uh, check out some episodes. If you are, if so we've done 243 episodes, we've had the podcast for three years. Uh, oh, wow. they, they alternate between interviews with people telling us their cheating story and then catch up episodes where it's just Catherine and I, uh, like the episode Matt was referring to, that was just the beginning of the year wrap up for the last year. But, it just depends on what you want. We, we keep two different formats uh, because, you know, not everybody 
wants to hear us babble and not everybody wants to hear a cheating story. They just like to hear Catherine and I talk about our lives. So you get those options. If you just read the descriptions, you'll know which one is which. And if you're really unsure of where to start, you're a little too overwhelmed. Uh, our early stuff, great content, horrible sound quality, but you're welcome mm -hmm. to DM me and I will tell you where to start. I always love to send people a list <laughs> of some of my favorite episodes. If you want to do that, Cheaties Podcast. Uh, also, just you can follow me on anything, TikTok, as apparently you gotta, I gotta get my numbers up on there according to the industry. So if y'all could, uh, <laughs> gotta drop some cra some crowd work, some crowd me. work clips. Yeah, ladies, yeah, okay? yeah. Follow me over there uh, at Lace Larrabee. It's at Lace Larrabee on everything. And then my album is out. Uh, you can get it. It is uh, called White Trash Cinderella. There is an accompanying quote. I won't want to call it a special because the video quality. The cuts are bad. It's weird, but it is. It is almost at five hundred thousand views uh, on oh, that's YouTube. Amazing. And, you can see and, and if you want, you free. can just send that. Uh, send the raw footage over to JD. He'll fix it up real <laughs> oh, nice please, for you. God, because unlike it. you, he does do things for our treasured guests. <laughs> All right, guys. If you have topics, tweet them into me at Starters Matt or email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail .com. Remember to rate us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube. Thanks for listening. Thanks to JD. Thanks to Lace for coming on. Lace, good luck on your year of yes in 2023. Thanks in advance to everyone for leaving a five-star review. I'm Matt Austin, and this was good. We'll see you next week.